mean, first of all, at the same time, the Big Ten just went for USC and UCLA adding. Is it too crazy to say they would add Florida State or Miami to the Big Ten? It's not that crazy. <laughs> What is up, everybody? It is Jake with Master Football back at it again. Happy Thursday. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to date on all things EA College Football, subscribe to this channel right now. I also do some pro football videos, some college football videos, and some Madden videos as well. Please subscribe to the channel. Please do that. Hit that red subscribe button. I really, really appreciate it. Hit that like button. Also helps the channel out a lot, too. Without further ado, though, let's get into the video. All right, guys, so we are only a few days from the reset announcement that the Pac-12 and the Big 12 will not be coming together. And I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes that we don't know about. One player in all this conference realignment, again, the Big Ten's have done some things the last couple of weeks. You know, the uh, uh, SEC did some stuff. The Big 12 did some stuff again last year. And then you saw the American and the Mount West was going to talk and then the Sun Belt and the Conference USA. And there's a whole bunch of different things that are happening. So, because you have to remember, everything that happens from the top trickles down. I made a video about that before. And we're still going to see this again because I guarantee you that they're not just going to sit there. The Pac 10 is not going to, because now it's the Pac 10. The Pac 10 needs to be careful because they need to somehow get some value. The Big 12 is looking. Maybe we can pillage that corpse. There's been one conference that's been kind of not really named and that is the acc and again this channel many other channels out there have talked about the acc's grant of rights up until 2036 it seems again the words we keep on hearing are ironclad things like that that being said though i want to go into an article because although the capability isn't there the desire to leave definitely is so here we are on OutKick.com from Clay Travis. Clay Travis, the ACC schools all want out of the ACC. And again, talks about the Big 12 and the Pac-12 expansion rumors and things like that. But again, we're going to make sure we're clear about this. It says, ever since the Big Ten poached USC and UCLA from the Pac-12, the phones have been ringing off the hook at the SEC and Big Ten offices. Yes, many of those schools calling to seek to join the SEC and the Big Ten are in the Pac-12 and the Big 12. But it's not a surprise these schools will be scrambling for new homes. What may come as a surprise to many is how aggressively the ACC schools are attempting to join up with the SEC and the Big Ten. Why is this a big story percolating beneath college football's surface? Is this how long is the ACC going to still exist as a major conference? And when will the raid of the ACC officially get underway? Because the ACC's demise feels inevitable at this point. It's just a question of when it happens, not if it happens. In the short term, the school with the most power to alter the conference realignment calculus is Notre Dame. If the, Notre, if the Irish decide to join the Big Ten, then it's likely the Big Ten would expand further, more than likely. And again, you remember there that fact that it was it would be Notre Dame would be added to the Big Ten. And then to go along with USC and UCLA, the Stanford Cardinal would come over, already arrival of Notre Dame, great school, would come on in. They would more, more than likely be 17 and 18 added to the Big Ten if they decided to go that way. And when the ACC officially enters the realignment phase, something unique will finally happen. The SEC and Big Ten, who thus how far have respected each other's geographic territories, will finally square off head to head. Yes, the SEC took Missouri, a long rumored Big Ten target, and yes, the Big Ten took Maryland, but so far, that's nibbling at the geographic edges of each conference. The SEC and Big Ten's territorial integrity has remained intact to this point. Just for clarification here, just so we can kind of see this, the ACC is going to be this light blue, the Big Ten is going to be that green, and then the SEC is going to be that orange. And you see what he's talking about here, how the fact, for the most part, again, Missouri's up here, you see Maryland's over here, but once these blue teams start to become up for grabs, then we're going to see who really wants to go there. I'm telling you right now, the battleground we're seeing is right in this region right here. So we come down here and check this out. That's where we're going to see a couple of different schools here. UVA could realistically be a target for both. We see uh, Virginia Tech. We see Wake Forest. Wake Forest more than likely not, but North Carolina would and NC State would be as well. We also see the Clemson is kind of close. I mean, I think that what, will have, what actually have to happen is, I mean, first of all, at the same time, the Big Ten just went for USC and UCLA adding, is it 
too crazy to say they would add Florida State or Miami to the Big Ten. It's not that crazy, you know? So I think that those are realistic options. I think the teams most likely to be left out of this are probably going to be Boston College and Syracuse. But I actually want to go into an article really quickly here and show you just what this actually looks like when you're talking about integration with conference realignment. So this is from medium.com. This article is an awesome article. Which college football programs were the most watched in 2021? This was just this last season and it goes through a couple different things here. You see Ohio State 5.22 million per game averaged across the entire season and then Michigan, Alabama, Penn State, and so on and so forth. I actually took this information and I made an Excel spreadsheet for it. But trust me, there's a reason why I didn't post a video yesterday is because I did thankless work on this and I was just too tired. But check this out able to take this I, I was able to sync it with the viewership rank and then the teams and then their viewership and then i also added whether or not they were a member of the aau and the american association of universities and whether or not they were a tier one or a tier two research institution so you see the fact that right here the average viewers per game in thousands uh ohio state had uh 5220 which is you know fancy way of saying you know five million but i wanted to make sure we can go through a couple things here so we can see what we're kind of dealing with when we come in here and we actually sort by the Big Ten. You're able to see a couple patterns in here. So Nebraska, as of 2011, left the AAU, but they were formerly in there. They're all tier one research institutions, and they are all, I mean, look at this viewership ranking. 1, 2, 4, 8, 11, 12, 20, 21, 24, 26, 31, 39, 48, and then 58. God, Rutgers, basically, Rutgers, you were only added because of where you were. Now, we see the Big Ten. I also want to make sure we can go into the SEC to see what they kind of select for. So the SEC is a little bit different here. So again, viewership is great. 3, 5, 7, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 23, 33, 43, 53, 60, and then 106. Sorry, Vandy, you're doing great with the, with the education. Look at them down here. You see the fact that their AAU requirements are not as strict. So you see the fact here, Alabama, no. Georgia, no. Florida, excuse me, Auburn, no. Florida, yes. You know, you see Tam, uh, Texas A&M is a yes, Missouri is a yes, and then Vanderbilt is a yes. Uh, but then you see the fact they're all tier one research institutions. So they do, that does still factor into what they want to do. Now, let's look at the ACC and see what kind of fits from that perspective. So here we are with the ACC to see these teams. So for the Big Ten, very, very important tier one research institution and AAU membership. Where do we find those commonalities here? So Clemson is a pretty big brand. They do a pretty good job but they are not an AAU member. However, North Carolina is, Virginia is, Pitt is, Georgia Tech is, and Duke is. Now, what I think from right now, from this perspective, Pitt doesn't necessarily add a, a footprint for the Big Ten, so I don't know what they would be in there, but UVA does, Georgia Tech does, UNC does. I think those are big time options. And again, all these tier one research institutions uh, Wake Forest is a tier two, but for the most part, look at this right here. I'm telling you right now, there's a reason why UNC and UVA would be rumored because then you'd add North Carolina, a, a state, and Virginia right next to Maryland. I mean, well, obviously, uh, Virginia is next to Maryland, and then North Carolina is next to Virginia. You could add those teams. You can maybe group one together with the Virginia Tech, but remember here, remember, 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 this AAU membership is very, very important to the Big Ten and the fact they want to have that bay. They don't want to add anybody, any scrubs from an education perspective. But from the SEC's perspective, let's see what they have here. Realistically, Clemson adds some solidification of South Carolina, but doesn't give them a new region. Florida State technically doesn't give them a new region. Neither does Miami. And as a matter of fact, Florida has explicitly said they don't want Miami in the conference, but North Carolina does. Louisville doesn't. Virginia does. Pitt does. Uh, Wake Forest does, Wake Forest does, and NC State do, does, but at the same time, they're not, how do I say this? They're not as big of brands as you would want. Maybe NC State and North Carolina as a pair. Georgia Tech doesn't. Virginia Tech does. Uh, for Syracuse was a former AAU member that does, but they don't really get that much viewership. You're not really sure whether or not they want to be added to be dividing that pot. Same thing with Boston College and same thing with Duke. So I think that those are the realistic players you're looking at right there. From the SEC's perspective, I think everybody wants North Carolina and everybody wants Virginia. So those are the two they're going to battle over. The uh, Pitt would actually be a realistic option for the SEC. Surprisingly, Pitt would be a good option. Louisville wouldn't because they already have Kentucky. Uh, but then from the, uh, the Big Ten's perspective, you see the fact that, I mean, UNC is a big battleground. 
and then in addition to UVA. Pitt probably not, maybe Georgia Tech, and maybe another partner with North Carolina. I mean, you might as well just add Duke, add Duke, North Carolina, Virginia, and then Georgia Tech. That actually might be a pretty cool combination to add in there, those four. All in all, I will say this, the fact that the, the ACC, like I said, all of these guys want out right now. Now, what the interesting, uh, you know, conversation to start going forward is if let's just say eight of them leave. So let's just see what we got right now. Right now we have 14 teams, eight leave. We're left with six. What do those six do? Do those six stick together? Do they try and poach a couple of the schools? Do they go after UCF, USF, West Virginia, Cincinnati? Do they do something like that? That's the question. But we'll address that at a later date. All right, guys, so that is my quick analysis. And again, if I have any typos in there, let me know in terms of like numbers and things like that. But that's the reason why you keep on seeing UVA and you keep on seeing UNC being brought up is because Big Ten need AAU membership and want new states. The SEC is basically just doing whatever they can to, uh, to basically, I think at this point, they're doing whatever they can to keep up with the Big Ten because the Big Ten is going to be generating more revenue. But what do you guys think of all this situation? If the ACC's grant of rights were to come up and be available, who do you think would make a better pitch out there? Do you think the Big Ten or do you think the SEC? Get in the comments right now and let me know. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I appreciate it. That's all I got for you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I am out.